peace, 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 IG. Daniel KC1 and CF signing back in with you. This morning, survival tip, daily survival tip number five is build a community of like-minded people. Daily survival tip number five, build a community of like-minded people. Uh, this is an extremely important step. All the steps, all the tips, um, of course, I'm gonna say <laughs> they're extremely important. I wouldn't give them um, and my perspective of them because I didn't create none of these. These are tips that have existed. These are truths that have existed long before I was a concept in anybody's mind. Except God, God knows, you know. Omnipresent, omnipotent, omni aware, if you will. Um, but of course, I'm always going to say that this is an important one. All of them are important. The reality, though, is that when you think about survival, when you think about preparedness, um, while as an individual, you have to do what you must do in order to make sure that you, um, absent help, absent um, guidance and direction, um, and any given situation, specific situation, that you are as fit as you can get yourself to be to meet and overcome whatever obstacles may be in your path. What do I mean? I mean, while you may not be able to, you might not have total recall and perfect control over your body, right? Meaning you're going to forget things and there are physically things that you may not be able to do. That's just the reality. Um, but if you are training and conditioning yourself to meet and overcome all obstacles in your path, while you might not ever get to 100%, and I don't think there's a human being on the planet that has ever gotten to 100% of that um, outside of God himself, then the reality is that you're going to have to just train, 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 and, and, and pray with your hands and pray with your feet that when the day comes, you have the energy, you have the knowledge, you have the direction on how to over, meet and overcome an obstacle. So, outside of you putting yourself to that degree, then yes, you need a community. When it comes to survival, um, train yourself as an individual to be able to meet and overcome as many obstacles as possible. And then, train your, and, and then on top of that, and even um, simultaneously, train your community. Build and train your community. You might not be with your loved ones. You might not be with a friend. You might not be with an acquaintance, somebody who you trust when something goes down. You just might be by yourself. And if you're by yourself and you can't handle that situation, then A, I like to say is you should have prepared a little better. Um, you should have trained a little bit better. Uh, but the reality is that you have the opportunity to surround yourself with other people who think like you. You have the um, opportunity to surround yourself with other people who believe like you do. Now, I want to make something else clear. Uh, when we're talking about a community of like-minded people, when we're talking about you with other people, that if we've seen you walking down the street, you look like robots and some kind of robot military. I'm not talking about uniformity. I'm talking about unity. You want to unify yourself with people who are like-minded. So these people don't have to believe everything you believe. They don't have to do everything you do. They don't have to speak the same way, but they should have common goals and interests and um, common goals, interests, and should share um, at least similar responsibility to the overall survival of that network so that everyone has the freedom of expression. Everybody has their freedom. We got um, Farmer Courtney in the building. Peace, Farmer Courtney. Uh, Q minus is in the building. Thank y'all for tapping in. Um, so, when you put yourself with a team of people who are like minded, it's not to say that y'all eat the same food, y'all go to the same places, y'all wear the same clothes, the same style, and that might be the case. You know, or you might have a uniform that you all rock for certain occasions or something like that. But we're just talking about when it comes down, when things hit the fan. Everybody in your network looking different ways, uh, with different likes and different dislikes, and with um, all kind of other differences, are able to unify around an objective, unify around a goal, unify around a, a common thought uh, or conception, 
in order to affect survival. So yes, that's daily survival tip number five. Daily survival tip number five. Build a community of like-minded people. Now, to go even further into that, when we're talking about building a community of like-minded people, understand this is something that takes time. Um, there are people that are already within your sphere of influence, and there are people who um, are nearby, maybe one degree, two degrees, even three degrees removed from those in your sphere of influence who are already fit, fit to at least um, enter into that circle. Meaning they, they fit the criteria. You just have to figure out who that is. You have to figure out what that criteria is. Now, whenever I speak to anybody about this, understand I'm approaching you as if you are the initiator, as if you're the one who's going to initiate this thing. That may not end up being the case, but I, I can't speak to somebody I'm not speaking to. I can only speak to those who choose to click on this video. So if, if you're listening to this, then I'm, I'm thinking of you as the person who's going to initiate this community. That being said, you are being the first one until you invite somebody in and, and not just to be a part of it, but to help you to organize, build or control or um, design or whatever word you want to use on this community, then you are in charge of all of that. So everyone you talk to, everyone you deal with is a potential candidate to join this community. Now, I, I, I did a live a couple months ago talking about um, building a, a family network. It should be titled, so you should be able to find it. It's, it's, it's only like a couple months old. Um, and I go through some, one of the slides that is actually in my um, class. I went through the slides and explaining um, what it looks like when you're trying to build a family network, or at least the questions you have to ask yourself and what you have to consider when trying to build a family network. I don't have that list in front of me, that PowerPoint right in front of me, obviously, because I'm walking. Um, but basically, you know, it starts off with identifying um, those around you who already, that, that, that if, if something was to jump off tomorrow, they already have, play a vital role in your life. People that already have, you know, almost unlimited access to you. What am I talking about? The people that live in your household. Your, 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 your family, your immediate family in your household and those you basically see on a daily basis. Um, those people who have access to your home. I mean, if you were asleep, they could rig your home. If they were asleep, they could leave your door unlocked. If you, uh, if not safe, if you were sleeping and, and y'all in the same house, they could unlock your door. If, if, if y'all live in the same house, they could spike your coffee. They could, you know, those people have the most access to you already. So you must consider them for your family network, right? Because if they're not a part of your family network, then they're outside of that. Not to say that they're enemies, but there's a degree of trust. There's a degree of responsibility. There's a degree of um, duty that is or should be imposed on, uh, is imposed the right word, that should be expected of those who accept a position within the community. I'll say that. And so someone living in your household, again, um, is a consideration. What do I mean? Your, your children don't have to be a part of it. Your spouse doesn't have to be a part of it. Would it make sense for them not to? No, it would make more sense for them to be a part of it. Um, but the reality is some people, th th there's always a leaning or an inclination for some people to go to a different side of the fence, even when it comes to how they deal with their loved ones. We know this is, is, is a, just a big fact, um, right? Um, but they should be considered first. Everyone has to be vetted. No, I need to understand, well, what would you do in this situation? Well, how do you think we should respond? Okay, if you think we should respond that way, what means do we have to do it, okay? If we don't have the means, how are we going to get it? Because in order to be a part of a community that I want to be a part of, you have to be able to answer those questions um, or know how to work out the answer to those questions. Because you might not have it right there, then and there, but once the question is posed and you realize it's a relevant question, okay, well, what are you going to do to work out that answer or to help us as a community work out the answer to that question? Now, this is important because in a survival community, you need critical thinkers. You need people who are capable of making um, sound decisions without compromising the integrity of that community, right? Now, your next tier of people are going to be people who don't necessarily have all that vital control. Like, they don't necessarily have keys to your home. Um, they're not people who 
you know, um, you love them and, and like, like even if because the family, you have family that is not living in your home, but still has access to you and still has your, uh, a degree of your mind, um, meaning they can say something to you and it's going to affect you, um, good, bad or otherwise, because you love this person, you trust this person. Um, but then you have the next tier of people who are people that you work with. Somebody you might have worked with for 15 years. They're not blood related. They just, you know, you trust the person. You know, they show up to your children's birthday parties. You go to their children's birthday parties. Y'all, y'all, you know, y'all got grills standing next to each other. This cookout and that cookout, whatever have you. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a real relationship there. Um, this is the guy, the girl that, you know, literally makes your coffee every morning. It's the same one. You're working the same Dunkin' Donuts for years. And you go in that Dunkin' Donuts and, and that person's making your coffee. That's a degree of access. And the people you see on a daily basis, they know something about your patterns. They know something about um, your personality. They know something about your interaction with the environment, right? These are people you should consider. You say, well, I only get coffee from this person. But this person might have already developed a certain level of respect or love even for you or, or, or at least, you know, admiration or something to that degree. You can't discount the time. You have to, you have to literally, the list I have basically goes through all of the different people you interact with because you never know where your help is going to come from. You never know where an enemy is going to arise from. You just don't know. But unless you're doing a vetting um, process, then really a person can fall to either side and without having the immediate knowledge, see the other person knows if they look at you as an enemy. The other person knows if they look at you as a friend. You the one that don't know. You're walking down the street, something jumps off and the guy's like, hold on, that's Mrs. So-and-so and decides to jump in. That person was looking at you as, as, as somebody, you know, that they cared for to some degree, right? Or it could be, I see this lady come, I seen this brother come into every, every morning, and they always got nice rings on, they always dress nice. I see the car they come through the drive through with. Man, listen, I know they packing, I know they got something. My cousin's a stick-up kid, so what I'm going to do is give him the routine. She comes from off of this street and through the drive through and then goes down that street. Just get up behind that car, trust me, she got something on her. It could happen like that. I'm, listen, I, I lived another life. I lived another life. We paid attention to everybody. Youth, if you don't think these, these youth out here paying attention to who drives down their block, what cars repeatedly come down their block, because they want to know undercover, because undercover drive all kinds of stuff. I'm going to tell you, just give you a little bit of that mindset. People in the streets, most pay attention like this. You know, we don't know who the D's are. We don't know who the, who the, who the, who the stick-up kids are all the time. We don't know who has ill intent. So I'm telling you, when we just stand on the block, I used to hustle in the downtown area of my city, we paid attention to every vehicle that went past. We knew if a vehicle came past two, three times, how many people was in that vehicle. We recognized license plates, numbers. We know who the, who, we know who the, who the informants are, the stick of kids are. Well, we know some of them, I should say. Like, but we have this knowledge. And so you don't know who's already in your environment. It's very important to what I'm saying about building community because your community, it, it already exists. The people who are a part of your network, that's, it's, that's already been um, decided, decided on a universal scale. You have to actually pull that together. The universe has already put everything you need right there for you. So as you're vetting people, you have to ask yourself these questions. Who has access to me? You start with the most access and you work your way down. You work your way down, right? And so that next tier of people are people who have something to give access. You know, the, the, the guy at your job, again, He's worked there for 10 years. You might talk to him. You might not talk to the person, but they get access to the refrigerator where you keep your lunch. You know, they could put a word in the ear of, 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 of a manager or somebody uh, to have a negative or positive in, in effect, impact. Um, that person has, has, has some degree of impact. Um, you, there's a lot of things you have to consider, right? But I don't want to go down that track because I don't have the PowerPoint right in front of me. And I haven't memorized it like that. Now... Again, when you're talking about building a, a, a community of like-minded people, these people should all have something, like I spoke about in a live of, uh, um, last week or the week before, something to bring to the table. And before I go further into that, let me explain this. You have family members, you have people in your community uh, or in your sphere of influence, people that you're around all the time who may not be capable um, physically capable, mentally or emotionally capable. When I say consider and I say a person is fit or not fit, I'm not telling anybody to exclude anybody. There are people in your network, there are people in around you who do not qualify for um, this network that I'm speaking of. And when I talk about the network, the network are people who actually hold some 
um, degree of, of, of control and access. These are people who have a responsibility. They're people who may be in your community um, who don't have the ability to exercise that. They're still welcome within the community, but there's certain access that they won't have. There's certain information that they will not be privy to. This would make more sense if you was in the class, uh, honestly, uh, because there's a lot that goes into that. So, you you know, those people, for instance, I had a younger brother who's, who's since passed, um, died of cerebral palsy. Couldn't walk, couldn't talk, blind out of one eye, deaf out of one ear. She just simply would not be considered a part of that controlling body. But we're not going to, you know, not take care of him. You know, your elderly grandparent who, who's just not capable of, you know, picking up the same kind of load as everybody. They might even have dementia or Alzheimer's and can't be trusted with certain information or because they might just speak out of turn or whatever have you, right? Yeah, we're taking care of grandpa. We're taking care of younger bro. We're taking care of cuz. We're taking care of whoever it is in, in, in a physical situation or a mental, emotional situation that is, isn't capable of handling a real responsibility. So we're not casting nobody out, but you have to vet and, and figure out who's that council of people, who's who's the part of that community that's going to help you lead, people who's going to be responsible. Okay, well, I consider the, 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 the guy that works at Stop and Shop um, in my area, I go to Stop and Shop all the time, or Kroger's or whatever, you know, Piggly Wiggly or whatever grocery stores in your area, and I, this, the same one that cuts my meat, the same one that um, gives this service, this guy or this girl. And, and I'm always cool. It's always cordial. We talk, we, you know, we're there in the line. We talk about each other's children and, 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 and all this kind of stuff, whatever have you. And one day the person comes up to you and says, like, hey, you know, we're about to throw away X amount of boxes. Blah, blah, blah. And what we do is we typically give away these boxes of food. I wanted to know if you if you needed some because I'd rather give it to you than throw it away. That person is access. Somebody already cool it. They have access to resource and material. Okay, well, cool. You know, you vet that out, you get the food, is it, the quality is it, you know, and all that kind of thing. But eventually this person, how you doing, man? Good morning. Has, has the potential to bring something to the table. And it might be more than just what they have access to the job, but that's an entry door. Because somebody already has some kind of end with because you interact with them all the time. It's a person that if somebody was looking for you in the community, if they walked up and say, hey, do you know this woman? They're like, yeah, I know that woman. She comes here between three and four o'clock every, 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 every two weeks. Oh, she, oh, he comes here, um, you know, two times a week or something like that. Peace, peace. We got Brother D'Artagnan in the building. Peace, bro. Uh, and so, I, so I, real, real quick, bro, because you took the class, um, I'm going over, you know, building a family network. Um, so I know you're familiar with that one, building a family network. Um, and I was speaking about how you go through vetting people um, to see who would be a, a good fit for your community. And so I'm just talking about, and today is daily survival tip number five, um, build a community of like-minded people. So I was just explaining to them a little bit about, you know, what I teach in the class about that, building the family network and how I, I teach that, you know, we don't exclude nobody, but somebody might not be included in that um, top tier of, inf of, of um, responsibility, if you will. And so we, again, we're sitting in this family network you want people who are going to bring something to the table. So one of the things I heard somebody say purposely was like, listen, straight up. My children who are grown and out of my house have their own homes. They know that what I'm preparing in my home, because it's just him and his wife, and then he has grown children. So what I'm preparing in my home is not for them. They, they, they don't expect to be able to. And I make sure they know that they're not able to just come over to my house if things hit the fan and just live. Like, this is what he was saying. He was on the video with his son. His son did a joint, a joint video on YouTube. And he was like, listen, my son already knows that he has to build up his survival storage for his own family. He has his own wife and children. Um, right? And the son's like, yeah, I agree. And he said that even if, if something was to happen and they had to come, they have to come with at least a year's worth of their own supplies. Food, water, or ability to make water or, or clean water. Um, their own emergency supplies and stuff like that. Um, he was real clear. He was real clear. Like, this is how we have it. So even his own children, like this is a common mindset in the, in, in the prepper community that no matter who it is, they show up to the gate, they show up to the door. What are you bringing to the table? Son, daughter, uncle, auntie. You know, and it doesn't have to be physical um, products or, 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 or resources. It can be 
it can be um, your know, knowledge. Again, we talked about that before. That your brain is your most important asset. It's your most important resource. Um, yeah, your intimate circle is different from your general associates. And then there are people in the intimate circle um, who are who are um, going to be privy to information that everyone else is not privy to. You know, you can you can build into this BT. Um, in my class, I teach about you know having people in that network who okay, while well, you brought you brought this example, I always give you know you got this uncle who's a, his trained um, in, in the military and he knows how to handle firearms. He knows self defense and he trains everybody in the group and he brings the weapons. Um, and then I make an example of somebody who, you know, the, the one who brings the food, they have access to all this food and they bring the food and then, you know, they, they say, okay, well, I want to control the weapons. I want to control the weapons cache, the weapons depot. Um, but your uncle is like this hothead who, yeah, he's, he's good. He knows what he's talking about. He knows how to train, but he's always a hothead. He always wants to take things to the gun. So, yeah, you bring us some weapons, you teach us how to use them, but we can't put you in control of the, over, over the arsenal because you're a little too high-headed. So they don't get to choose what they do. Um, everyone is assigned by the overall council. Even that person who's, who's refused from that position would be on the same council, but they would have to convince the other members of the council that they'd be fit for that position. But if you're, like, within that circle, people have to be put into positions that they can manage and maintain, right? So you have to consider all the stuff when you're building a community of like-minded people. What did it bring to the table and what post, what position can they hold within that, um, within that organization, within that community that will be conducive to the overall survival of the community? And, you know, we talked about the person who brings the food, but, you know, they don't have discipline around food. Now, you know, you there's rationing involved with survival and preparedness. Jump, jump, hits the fan tomorrow and the community has gotten together X amount of shovel safe food for the entire community. You have exactly some food for your home and your home only, but then you have stuff that you donated to the community. If there's a certain number on that, well, this is how much we can each have um, spread, divided equally um, amongst the community. Well, then the person who is a glutton, the person who's so greedy that they don't care they're gonna eat when they see food, you know. You don't have, even if they're the ones who brought most of the food, you can't put them in charge of that, um, managing that resource. Because they can't be trusted to do that. You might be able to put them in charge of the weapons depot. You know, they're just learning how to shoot. They're just learning how to deal with the weapons, but they're they're responsible enough around weapons. They're responsible, they're, they're cool, they're more cool headed when it comes to fighting and all that kind of thing that you don't have to worry about them arming a whole bunch of people to go respond to something that happened that they started in the first place, right? Like, you have to be real wise about the people you choose and what positions you put them in. Because while someone might be fit for the community, it doesn't mean that they can handle every responsibility that needs to be handled within that community, right? Um, but again, they should have something that they're bringing to the table. Point blank period. Um, it's mad, it's like cloudy out here. It's supposed to be raining for like the next three days. It rained yesterday and the day before yesterday. It was supposed to rain for like another three days here in Boston. It's like, we just got a break from some heat, a uh, uh, good little heat wave. Uh, what do you say, right? It's not only just the knowledge and skills, but also the emotional intelligence to properly manage situations, exactly. And so these are things we want to consider um, when we're building our community. But uh, I don't want to belabor the point, family. Let me just make this last point. When you're building, or when you're, um, building a community of like-minded people, Ultimately, again, the goal is survival. The goal is not to outdo someone else. The goal is not to plan to go to war against no other group. The goal is not to prevent other people from surviving. So when you're developing a, a, a community of like-minded people, the goal is the survival of your community. If your community is not, a, is not um, threatened by another community or another person outside that community, there's no reason for your community to take um, negative action or force against someone else. You're not building a, a gang. You're not building a, 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 a military. You might be building a community of like-minded people who are militant in nature and they handle things militantly um, in order to keep a certain degree of order. But this, this, this community is not a gang. It's not something that, it's not, it's not a, a group of people you're going to put together to do harm to anybody. I want to stress that part. So keep that in mind. You want to find like-minded people who can unify. 
have unity around uh, a common goal and objectives, but not necessarily be uniform. People can have their own opinions. People can have their own way of doing this and that. Like, there might be 10 different ways to start fire. Somebody says, no, we should use the ferro rod. Someone says, no, we should use the mag magnesium striker. Someone says, no, we should use um, matches and lighters. Whatever have you, who cares? Y'all differ there. The, the, the point is we need some way to start fire. So all y'all do y'all way, and that way we got four, five, six, seven, eight different ways to, to light a fire. Everybody doesn't have to believe that Berkey filter or the soya straw or the life straw is the best filter. No, if you believe Berkey is the best one, you get yourself a Berkey. If you believe life straw is the best one, get yourself a life straw. If you believe soya is the best one, get yourself a soya. And guess what? Now we have options. Um, no, well, I think we should dress in black. I think we should dress in fatigue. No, you dress in black, you dress in fatigue. But when the call comes, everyone should be here in a timely manner. When the call comes, everyone should be here ready to fight. When the call comes, everyone should be here ready to lift. When the call comes, everyone should be here to defend. When the call comes, everyone should bring their bring their um, what they what they pledge for the group to the table. When the call comes, everybody should um, you know uh, give their opinion, their advice. When the call comes, everybody should be at the table to help make these decisions. That's unity. When the call comes, everybody should have. Um, a knowledge of where to go in order to um, evade a certain situation or to, to, to flee a certain situation. When the call comes, there's unity. We're all moving towards the same goal, looking different, thinking different, smelling different, acting different. Um, and when it comes to acting, of course, certain situations, no. When the situation comes, you drop what you do, you drop what you're doing, this is how we're going to move out for certain situations. Yeah, we do have to look uniform. Yes, but we need to be unified. Um, and so as you're building your community of like-minded people uh, and the call is put out, be on the same page, be on, be, be, you know, faithful to the goals, be faithful to that community. Um, and, and I'm going to make this point again, just because somebody got a title, th th that title don't mean nothing. Um, they, like, no, it doesn't mean anything. I don't care who they are. You have to prove yourself fit for this community. You have to earn your spot. You know, titles can be given, titles can be taken away. Point blank period. I'm not investing my time and energy into um, helping somebody to survive that doesn't want to do it for themselves. You don't want to train. You don't want to bring anything to the table. You don't want to adhere to the common um, rules that as a council those of us who are in this community came up with together you don't want to be able to adhere to that but if something hits the fan tomorrow you want to be able to call on the group to come to your aid if something happens uh, two weeks from now to your child or something like that you want us to respond as, as, as a group but you don't want to adhere to any of the things that we came to an agreement with as a group so then I don't, I don't think so then that means that, that, that title aside you can't be a part of this that could be a spouse, that could be a child, that could be a co-worker, that could be an un uncle, that could, that could be your parent, straight up. When it comes to survival preparedness, everybody has to bring something to the table. Um, everybody has some degree of responsibility based off of what they're capable of handling. Some people just don't have the same capacity. I'm not going to things hit the fan tomorrow. I have a seven-year-old cousin. I'm not going to tell my seven-year-old cousin, no, you got to fight. You got it. No, it's not. It's not that simple. No, all the children, all the elders should not be fighting unless we literally are outnumbered to the degree that we need them. Um, and, but if we have the, the power to do it without them, then guess what? They should be, you know, no, y'all stay here and you leave guards with them type situation because the elders have a certain degree of knowledge. You know, that's what says old men for counsel, young men for war. Um, they have a certain degree of knowledge that you want to protect and the youth. That's the future. They're the ones who are going to, you know, have children and, 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 and bring in the new world or whatever have you. So they have to have their um, protection. And sub D, they have to have their degree of space put between them and, you know, certain parts of the mission. You can't expect, you can't, don't ex. how should I say that? Um, don't put them in a position where... You know, they have to hold a certain degree of responsibility that they're not ready for. But there's situations, yes, where children have to fight. You know, the minister teaches, you know, the minister taught us, like, you got to teach your children to, you know, your babies right in the crib. Teach them how to throw that bottle. 
that baby should know how to take that bottle and hit somebody square in the middle of the forehead make it a glass bottle so it break and cut the person on impact like, he didn't say all that i'm adding that i said so let me all right let me be clear i don't know what i just did was actually pretty wrong the minister said we should teach our babies to throw the bottle stop that's what he said i just added the rest of that on there i just want to make that clear um but i'm saying like yeah that's real and this is my opinion this is my take on that yeah, that child should be able to to some degree contribute right because if, if something happens and someone breaks into your home and what if it's you there with just your three children you know you might have a room where your children go and hide out but if, if, if they couldn't get to that room your children should be taught listen you might not be able to make it to your panic room. You might not be able to make it to the little spot we have in the house. That, that, that happens. You don't never let nobody just take you. You don't never let somebody just put their hands on you. You don't never let somebody just to, to do what they want with you. If there's something in front of you, throw it. If, 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 and teach them how to throw it. If, if someone is coming to attack you, you're a child. Yes, they're a lot bigger than you. Yes, but you're not helpless. Pick up that bat and swing it. Pick up that lamp and throw it. So and that's the mindset behind that. I hope that makes sense, right? So you have to you have to teach your, your children to defend themselves. Uh, but I don't, I, uh, I'm about to get off this family because I got to go inside now. Um, and it looks like it's, it's starting to drizzle and stuff out here. Um, thank you all for tapping in. Daily Survival Tip number five. Build a community of like-minded people. Um, leave your comments on this post. Leave any questions you have about anything I said um, on this post. In the comment section when I post it up. Go back and check out my previous daily survival tips and then my other videos if you have not been able to do so so far. Um, and let me know what you think on the comment section of those as well. Daniel Casey, 1CF, signing out. Peace.